The Church of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary this year celebrates the 150th anniversary of the Church. We are happy to show how the founding members and their families sacrificed everything to ensure religious freedom and to show their love for the Lord and His Church. Our story begins in a small village in England. The village of Mattingly, which is about an hour's drive from London, has existed for nearly a thousand years. The earliest record of the name Mattingly comes from 1066 and William the Conqueror in his Doomsday Book. The English monarchy and most of the country were faithful Catholics from the 6th century until 1534 and the reign of Henry VIII. At that time, Henry broke away from Rome and formed his own Anglican church. Laws were soon passed requiring all English subjects to pledge allegiance to the king and his newly formed church. Those who refused and remained loyal to Rome were imprisoned and even martyred. The Catholic Church went underground to avoid persecution. The Catholic underground for the next hundred years yearned for one thing, religious freedom. In 1632, George Calvert, Lord Baltimore, a recent convert to Catholicism, obtained a charter from King Charles I for land north of the Potomac River in the newly formed colony of Maryland. Since the charter did not prohibit establishing non-Anglican churches, Calvert encouraged other Catholics to settle there. On March 25, 1634, after an eight-month voyage, the Ark and the Dove arrived on St. Clement's Island in Maryland. Father Andrew White, a Jesuit priest who was among the passengers, celebrated Mass in thanksgiving for their safe arrival. To mark the spot, they erected a large cross. With the hope of religious freedom, Catholics flocked to the new colony of Maryland. In 1664, Thomas Mattingly and his family arrived in Maryland. Thomas's family was granted 300 acres for paying their own way from England. The land was called Mattingly's Hope, the hope being total religious freedom. Thomas, however, never saw that total freedom. Soon, new legislation in the colonies penalized the Catholic colonists. Many moved north toward Canada and west to the new frontiers of western Pennsylvania and Maryland in pursuit of this elusive freedom. It is said that John Mattingly in the early 1760s was the first Catholic to locate in what is now the city of Cumberland in western Maryland. In the next decade, many other Catholic families began migrating to western Maryland for these same religious and economic opportunities. Here they found a quiet peace a place where anti-Catholic laws could not be enforced. By the end of the Revolutionary War, the families of Arnold, Durbin, Logsdon, Frost, Mattingly, McKinsey, and Porter each had acquired land west of Fort Cumberland. Throughout what are now the communities of Cumberland, Mount Savage, and Frostburg, in this area known as the Arnold Settlement, a close-knit community began to form. Missionary priests traveled to the area whenever possible. By the beginning of the 1800s, Ohio had become the new frontier like Western Maryland had been a generation before. The hope for prosperous farming and a rural family community continued in the generation first born at Arnold Settlement. After two generations in Western Maryland, the call of the West once again beckoned. Beginning in 1805, Many families from this mountain community settled near present-day Danville in Knox County, where they formed one of the state's first Catholic missions. 
Shortly thereafter, William and Sarah Mattingly set out towards Pittsburgh for the new state of Ohio. With the assistance of friendly Indians, William and Sarah Mattingly, their horse and their trusty dog Schneider, were ferried across the vast Ohio River. They soon found their way to a small village called Newcomerstown, and after a year traveled southwest to the Muskingum River. William purchased a 100-acre farm and began a prosperous career in farming. William and his family were the only area Catholics until a few years later, when he joined with families in nearby Zanesville to form a small parish. For years, the Mattingly family traveled 10 miles each way to Zanesville to attend Mass. Inspired by his success in farming, William wrote back home to Maryland and encouraged his family to join him. By 1834, there were enough Catholics in Muskingum Township to establish a mission congregation. The Dominican Fathers of Zanesville came monthly and said Mass for these families in the home of William Mattingly. Within the next several years, many relatives from Maryland joined William and the others in an area now being called Mattingly Settlement. By 1855, no house could hold everyone comfortably for Mass. It was then that Father Charles Montgomery of St. Thomas Church in Zanesville wrote to Bishop Purcell in Cincinnati asking for permission for the families to build their own church. The next year, Bishop Purcell visited the settlement and offered the sacrifice at the home of the aged and venerable William Mattingly. Mr. Mattingly, the bishop wrote, is now engaged with the age of his patriarchal family and the Catholic neighbors in building a church on a beautiful site given by one of his nephews. The tremendous task of building a church was accomplished completely through the efforts of these devout pioneers. Clay was dug in the fields and bricks were burnt on site. Soon after the bishop's visit, workmen set a stone over the church doors with the inscription, St. Mary's Church, erected 1856. What a joy it would have been for William Mattingly to have seen this site. After 44 years, his dream had become a reality. On Holy Thursday, 1857, William passed from this life and met his eternal reward. His body was interred in the churchyard, it being the first burial in the new St. Mary's Cemetery. Once the church itself was built, parishioners continued working together to complete the interior. Francis Mattingly, son of William, provided a handsome sum to pay for the furnishing of the church. The ladies of the parish formed the St. Mary's Altar Society, which purchased the altars, stations of the cross, and furnishings for the sanctuary, among other items. The long-awaited day of celebration came on November 14, 1861, when Archbishop Purcell dedicated the church under the title the Church of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He also blessed the cemetery, and the next day confirmed a class of 13. The dedication was reported in the Catholic Telegraph. The church is a handsome and well-built structure, placed on an eminence where it can be seen from afar. It was crowded on the occasion of its dedication. There were 73 communions and 13 confirmations. The settlement is one in which the faith has been kept inviolate, with the aid of frequent and fervent communion devoted to the Blessed Virgin and the reading of good books by young and old.
During these early years, there were several priests that served the church as missionaries. Father John Mary Jacquet, who was named pastor at Kashachton in February 1869, served by far the longest of any. During his many years in Kashachton, the beloved Father Jacquet, pronounced Jacket by the native Ohioans, cared for five missions, St. Anne's in Dresden, St. Elizabeth at Kilbuck, St. Nicholas in Franklin Township, St. Mary's in Linton Township, and St. Mary's at Mattingly Settlement. Of all the places he served, he chose St. Mary's as his choice of burial once he died. He put a large stake in the ground near a tree beside the church. Father Jacquette stayed at Coshocton until September 1895, when he traveled to Galveston, Texas, where his former pupil, Nicholas Gallagher, was bishop. While in Texas, he wrote to Minnie Mattingly, Pull up the stake. They will not let me return now, and I'm certain they will not send my body back to Ohio. Last summer, I marked my grave at the Mattingly Church, but I suppose I will be buried in the sands of Galveston instead. As time went on, descendants of these pioneer families continued the generosity and faithfulness as their parents before them. In 1869, they raised enough to purchase an organ. In 1887, a bell was purchased for the church tower. It was blessed by Bishop Watterson under the name St. Rose. In 1908, stained glass windows were installed, given in memory of parishioners, at a total cost of In 1929, Father Jerome Mattingly set up a fund for the perpetual care of the cemetery. To commemorate the project, a grotto of the Blessed Virgin Mary was made of flint and granite. The statue of Mary was imported from Italy. In recent years, a brick patio and two stone benches were added to the grotto. The faith of this community is evident from the many vocations that have come from such a small congregation. These include Sister Ramona Mattingly, Sister M. Odelia Mattingly, Sister M. Ulrika Mattingly, Sister Agnes Mattingly, Sister Madeline Mattingly, and Sister Rose Veronica Mattingly, who is this year celebrating 75 years as a Sister of the Holy Cross at Notre Dame. Also from this parish were Reverend Julius Mattingly, Reverend Theodore J. Mattingly, Reverend Jerome Mattingly, Reverend Joseph Finan, and Reverend Herman E. Mattingly. Monsignor Herman Mattingly was the founder of the Catholic Record Society for the Diocese of Columbus. He received all three ranks of Monsignor, a rare and noteworthy accomplishment. He was celebrant of the church's centennial celebration and assisted at its 125th anniversary mass in 1981.
God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide up all you with his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we God be with you till we meet again. Neath his wings securely hide you. Daily man has still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. Recent improvements at the church include the construction of a picnic shelter behind the church, the restoration of two antique paintings, the first installation of running water, the addition of a handicap accessible ramp, as well as a sidewalk leading to the back of the church. The parish now has several annual traditions. Each one is not only to increase the faith of the current church community, but to remember the traditions of the past. Besides the annual Mattingly reunion each year in August, we also celebrate Easter egg hunts, May processions, Oktoberfest, All Souls Day family rosary and bonfire and ice cream socials. Although many families have moved away, this church still has a special place in their hearts. Christmas is a special time for families to come home and be together. Many still return home as often as possible. Throughout the years, it is nothing short of a miracle that our Catholic faith has survived and flourished in spite of persecution and hardships. Remember that our Lord proclaimed, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Love for the Lord and His Church have prevailed in the families and clergy. Throughout their united effort, we can now worship freely and celebrate this joyous anniversary of the founding of our Church. This Church not only shows the glory of the Lord, but also symbolizes the importance of family, faith, and love. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you, and 
Oh 